Okay. Call the meeting to order, and I'm going to just take a little license on the Aboriginal acknowledgement. And as much as we'd like to acknowledge the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Tanaha, the Silix, and the Sidix people, my thoughts turn to the fact that these people came here um, in their time to our region for the beauty of the outdoor and the fact that it was a bountiful area for hunting and fishing, and that's why these people came and why they settled in our area. And I think that when we reflect on the tragedy of the last couple of days, that when we think of why many of us have come here, we've come here for the bounty of what, what we get here in the Kootenays, the beauty of the land, the water, the outdoor activities. We know these two young men came here to work in the city of Nelson because they were outdoor enthusiasts. And I think that when we, when we think about Aboriginal acknowledgements, I've always been taught that one shouldn't just read the verbatim, but we should really speak from the heart when we acknowledge the land on which we live. And so it makes me think that today that Wade and Matt both came here to be outside. You, the, the area here is beautiful and beauty though is also powerful. And we know that it's powerful. This was an avalanche that took the life of a young man, Wade Tillmore. He was a father, a son, brother, and we think about him, we think about those that he has left behind today. We also think about Matt Nolay, the young man, who we are sending only the most powerful thoughts and warm wishes, sending him strength, the strength of our being and the strength of our land, that he recovers and comes back to join us. So I'd like to take this moment that we just think about both of these young men and think about all of the gifts that we have and the beauty of where we live and give thanks for that. I just, if people would like to have something to say before we get into the adoption of agenda, I'm more than willing. I mean, as board members, if you'd like to say something or, and I'm good if nobody wants to say anything. It's always hard sometimes to find, to find words. But some I, of you have worked. I want to say something, time. if I may. Um, like normally as board members, we don't get uh, opportunity to meet the officers who do the frontline work, but I had, the privilege of having a ride along with Wade. Oh, lovely. So, you know, so I feel like I, I know him. And yeah, I, I feel I have a heavy heart. Yeah, I, I just want to say that, as I said to one of the constables just downstairs just now, you know, I know your jobs aren't. Uh, easy on the easiest of days and this is certainly not the easiest days and you know my my heart goes out to the family of police officers that and and the, all the other staff that work in this building as well we're all affected but you're affected on a on a daily basis sorry for your loss and i just you know, um, if anybody wants to talk or reach out, that that we have resources and we have we have each other, and I think it's important to to remember that as as we move forward, um, it's still going to be difficult for a few days, and and for some of us, much longer than that. So, if I could have a motion then to adopt drop the agenda agenda as circulated. Moved, seconded, all those in favor, thank you. That passes. Moving on to adoption of minutes. On the December 14th um, meeting recommendation is to adopt the minutes 
Any errors or omissions? It's been moved by Lena, seconded by Sue. All those in favor? That's been carried. Thank you. Number four is um, public participation. The police board will permit comments from the public on issues the board is presently dealing with or on any other issues that is of interest to the general public. Comments from individual members of the public will be limited to a maximum of five minutes. And all comments during the session will be limited to 15 minute, minutes in total. And I see that we have um, some guests here today and we have a member of the press. And so I think I'll start with our guests if they have any questions or they'd like to um, make a comment. Um, and, Sherry. Yeah, well, name and where you live. Yes, thank you. Sherry Walsh, live in Nelson. And on behalf of the West Kootenai People for Racial Justice, I just want to express our sincere and heartfelt condolences on this really tragic loss and know that our goal has always been to work together with the police department to make um, justice services in, in this area as good as possible or as best as it can be and we're here to look for opportunities to provide support for you. Thank you. I just re <laughs> I reiterate what Sherry said. Um, I work in Caslo, and so I was privy to some of the stuff that was happening, and I, my heart just goes out to all of you and your families. It's been so tragic. And, um, and yeah, so as a human and a person, just send our love and wishes to everyone. And then as a group, you know, we're all here for support too. So you talk to that. Thank you. I got this morning and my email box had been um, inundated with emails. I'm going to have a miss the radio and support came in from all across the country for both officers. Heartfelt, like really in depth and I'm not an emotional person, but it broke me down. Uh, so I can honestly say on behalf of Vista, one of the the bridge, the whole company offers our condolences for the police department, for the families, for the city, and for the residents of Nelson as well. Um, we did note that um, Constable Millet was from Ontario. We do have a station in Cabascasing that is looking to put together a vigil because they believe that he was born and raised at the school or attended hers, which is just outside of campus casing. So our station right there would like to confirm that he is from campus casing or the Hearst area because they would like to do a they would like to honor him appropriately. Um even though he is so in hospital where they would still like to pay respects by doing something as far away as Ontario. So if we could get confirmation of that we would love to be able to put something forward to honor both officers. Thanks. I'm sure that the chief or deputy chief will be able, or Shiloh will be able to do a little bit of groundwork there to Great. determine that Thank for you. you and get back Thank to you. Mayor. Okay, seeing no other public participation. Moving on to item 5, 5A police board committees. Um, Specific or we, we were going to the Lindsay was involved. Right, yeah. right. And I think Lindsay, we have kind of, yeah, yeah, so I, thought, yeah. I had put in my, um, my preferences as well, and those were those aligned with what I just asked for suggestions. So I, I think that those are great. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. And Shiloh had given me the information, mm -hmm. so I'm time to look through it. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. So then we can confirm that all of those, all the members, mm -hmm. that will be in the next document that we get with everybody in their appropriate spot. So 5B, so we're moving on to the BC Association of Police Boards Conference theme ideas. We were sent away last time with the task to think about what the theme might be for the upcoming police board conference. And I think, um, you this is a little bit huge. Are you in that? <laughs> no, right. this is where I don't know who's on these committees. As yes, well. I am. I am on that committee. Yeah, yeah. no, that's right. I'm the liaison yeah. of the BCAPD. Yeah. So that part, you're absolutely correct. 
when we discussed it last time, I brought up um, a theme that had been suggested at the last um, association meeting, which was relationships. And we talked about it a little bit, but we hadn't gotten any further. Um, we're having another meeting, uh, a conference planning meeting next week. And I think that it's probably time for us to try to nail down if we think that that's a good theme, what we mean by it and start to think about who we would like to have as a keynote speaker and, you know, how to, how to target the, the theme through that. So any ideas that this group could come up with would be really good, but the conference planning committee will probably try to finalize something next week. Next week. So when you say that though, so this group could still, maybe we, if we thought of a different theme or would you like to concentrate on that and no, if there's something else that you know feels more relevant or people get more excited about, that's fine. It was just a suggestion, okay. especially because it's so broad, and we could focus on what element of it, you know, meant the most to us, or you know, to talk about. Yeah. So maybe everybody keep your your mind comes to something, or in the middle of the night something anybody comes to you that ideas pass along to. <laughs> And somebody with a marketing background is going to, it's going to be catchy and it's going to get everybody excited. I'm not that person. <laughs> I'm very practical. And <laughs> well, I think the meeting's the 19th, right? So yeah. before then. Before then. Yeah, by the 19th. Yeah. And just fire off anything you want an email. You know, it doesn't have to be fully thought out. Just if you think there's something that would be really relevant and interesting, send it to me. I'm just going to put this on the table only because the fact that, and, and we use it a lot here in Nelson, but something about um, building bridges, and I have no idea what your last, uh, what previous themes have have been about, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, we do have the, the iconic um, yeah. Bob, and I think that as we have, you know, from the, I always get your names wrong and the you know West Kootenai Racial Justice Group yeah. and all these other groups where we're trying to build um, bridges with whether or not it's our, our anchors or our social service groups or whatever. We're faced with these same social um, issues, I think, at, at, with all police forces and whatever. And then what it does is it always makes for the, the really easy logo if you're trying to think of like a I'm sorry, but uh, I'm, a gifts, right? I'm, a, I'm a healthcare person. Like, <laughs> um, you know, uh, organizing conventions isn't my thing, but um, that's always something that works uh, really nice. And the fact that they, these, the majority of these are lower mainland, um, mm -hmm. and and like I say, it is that iconic thing. Everywhere you go, it's it's where's Bob and there's Bob and get your picture with Bob and like. Maybe what color is Bob? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember Bob, I, I've been here so long. I remember when Bob was silver, green, and orange, and now it's kind of cosmic pink and whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, but this, I mean, it, it's a simple, it's a simple concept, but I think it's a concept that in this day and age, that the building of bridges is. Um, Maybe an important reflection. I think it's the same. I think it's very. Um, they're they're very together. similar. Yeah, yeah. Building relationships, building bridges. Yeah, yeah. I think that they align or or could mean yes. the same thing. The market, you know? There's the there's marketing. the marketing girl right there. <laughs> um, anyways, just that's my my two cents. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. Think about it now, and I hadn't even thought about it until just sitting here yeah. just now. So there you go. Like well, done. Done. <laughs> well done. Um, five C. Yeah. So if anybody comes up with a brilliant idea. You have until the 19th to send it over to uh, 5C, the BC Association of Police Boards Awards Program. And so we were going to go away and think about um, this as well. And um, I'm open to the floor for any discussion. And uh, Sue, would you like to start again? Well, there are two elements to this. One is understanding the intent of the program that the BCADB is putting out. And the fact that if we want to participate in it, we need to contribute $350. Um, and then the second part of it is to look at the labels, I guess, of the three awards that are being proposed and thinking of 
how or if we would find those useful in terms of highlighting um, positive things going on either within the department or between the department and the community. So anybody have any thoughts after reading through this material? On, on the um, second page of the package, it says page nine of 14 actually, um, it shows who would be the nominators and then who would be the potential recipients. I mean, I'm, I'm new here. I mean, just to like, I, I think that I think the concept of this is is good, and we, perhaps we just need a bit more time to. Is there a time limit when they want to see this coming through? Do you have a? No, they don't. Um, we're having another meeting on the 20th of January, the the full association meeting. Right. And I'm sure that um, it'll be on the agenda to find out, you know, who wants to sign up or who's already had. The conversations and who hasn't. The all of the awards are available to us within any 12 month period. Oh, okay. So I don't think you know we have to decide tonight whether we're going to do it or not. Um, and it does say at the very end that to, to launch the, this award and be promotional materials and awards in January 2023 to each police board, but I'm sure there's got to be some flexibility within that. It's just on page 11. Yeah. Yeah. The, the advantage there is that the association is going to help to produce all of the um, marketing background and things like that that can be used to promote and to right. um, communicate it. So we don't have to take that on ourselves. Right. Well, that would be, that's always an excellent thing. I think, I think that um, for the contribution, I don't think it's that. Um, but in terms owners. of making a decision, yeah. could we like do they want to know whether we would we are on it and they, that would give them $350? Yeah, I it's like do we want to participate or don't us. we is yeah. basically the decision. Yeah. And do people have, feel that they've had enough time looking at this now a second time? We didn't make a decision last time, we referred it to this meeting. Mm -hmm. I also recognize that you know everybody is a bit distracted. Tonight, yes. So yeah, I'm very cognizant of that, and I don't think anyone is going to give us a hard time if we don't come up with a decision right away. And I think that if if we can just kind of keep that in the back of our minds, so that we could um, let Sue know as as uh, can, well. Can we can we call for a decision in February for sure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's just uh, then we'll move forward with this item again to the February board meeting. Um, somebody that can move referral, please. Move second that referral not debatable. All in favor, carry. Mm -hmm. And then moving on to item six, let's report. So last. Uh... Last meeting, I gave a fairly long um, update regarding the BC Association of Municipal Chiefs of Police and BC Association of Chiefs of Police, uh, just because we've had a couple of meetings that month, month and a couple of uh, committee meetings that month. Uh, but since then, through Christmas and New Year's and that, there hasn't really been any activity or meetings yet this year, so there's really no update on what was given last time. Uh, for community policing, I'm, I'm kind of Putting a different spin on it tonight, uh, it's almost the inverse of community policing, where the community, I think, is supporting the police this week in particular. I think it's a good opportunity to say thanks and recognize all the support the department has received from the community. Uh, you know, the the emails again, the calls, the flowers that have been delivered, uh, more food than anybody can eat yeah. has shown up, and of course. We've been trying to give some people some time off, so there's even fewer people around these days. But we're trying to give it out, spread it out, give it to the to the families of the officers and that who are also getting a lot of food and things dropped off. So uh, again, just the the generosity has been fantastic. The outpouring of support and condolences has been fantastic. So 
I, I think it's a bit of a gauge of some of the community policing things we've done in the past that, you know, it's it's coming back to us now. Um, the GoFundMe page was just set up last night, I think about nine o'clock last night. So it's, you know, it's 20 hours, give or take. And uh, I haven't had a chance to check it in the last couple hours, but even by, I think, noon, it was over $5,000. It's past it was, 17000 Yeah, it was over, over 10 at like three o'clock. Yeah. yeah, I thought I heard somebody say it was into the double yeah. digits yeah. of thousands. So again, just acknowledging that. And uh, I know there's been a lot of interest. Uh, Local News and CBC both checked with me today to find out if we'd had it set up yet so they could put it on their website. So I've got, had a chance to get back to Global. I haven't had a chance to get back to CBC yet, but I will do that. Um, yeah, that's kind of it for the community policing. We're, we're still doing all of our normal stuff other than the last couple of days. Uh, but again, uh, not to be broken record, but just want to make sure that, uh, that I recognize all the support we've been getting. Uh, the Nelson Police Foundation. Um, we had a burger, beverage, and Leafs game fundraiser planned previously. That was to go on January the 28th. So um, everybody would go to Finley's to start with. It's a $25 ticket. It includes a burger, a beverage of your choice, and then a ticket to the Leafs game. Um, we had that. I initially plan was for funding some of the other community programs or things we were going to do. We've since uh, discussed that and have changed that to a fundraising for the the two officers and their families uh, to support them. So I think that's a worthwhile cause right now, and I, I think it will be fully supported. So uh, I think we had 50 tickets initially, but be surprised if there's more demand for it now. So. Again, that's kind of in keeping with the, the community and uh, the relationship with the police department. But I, you always need to keep working on relationships, but I'm certainly uh, impressed with you know what we've received back in the last couple of days. That's it for my update. Great, thank you. Any questions from anybody? Okay, seeing then uh, moving on to item seven, deputy chief's report. Dr. Sordo, justice, please. Uh, there was really no update since the December meeting. Um, there was just one one file for this year, and uh, it's in progress. That's it. Uh, reports from directors. Holidays. <laughs> yeah, holidays. Nothing happening. Oh, a holidays. Okay. And my report. So my report is fairly limited, but I do need to um, pass along, as the as the chief was mentioning, and as has happened to all of us, including the media, the uh, the overwhelming um, uh, feedback from our uh, media scrum that we did yesterday, and just people um, wanting to handle condolences. But I I I promised. Uh, uh, Chief Brock, that I would um, at today's meeting uh, mention that he called to pass a lot of condolences. Um, you probably don't know Chief Brock, but he he's the guy whose name is on the outside of the building there. And I think the longest serving police chief in the in the city of Nelson. I think he was 13 years as police chief, and and he does. I I was fortunate enough to know um, uh, Ron when when he worked here. I was on city council when he was a uh, police chief. Um, so we go back a long way. We had a lovely, we had a lovely talk and, and he said that, you know, I still, I still have to stop myself when I tell people that, that that's my police force. <laughs> so um, he did want me to uh, pass along um, condolences and he thinks, he thinks that uh, he, he always says that this was the best job he ever had with being the police chief here in, in Nelson and that he was, uh, his heart's really, Always oh, still been here. Thank you. Item number 10, correspondence and information 10A, the Nelson Star. Just a few more on page 13. It's just our ad, Charlotte? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So, number 11, we have a little bit of uh, new uh, business about the agenda format. 
and the use of the consent um, agenda. And you can read there that basically consent agenda is used for items that are routine and are already usually um, the, the vote would be in, in favor of. And grouping them together uh, does decrease the amount for uh, lots of motions on the table. Um, and it helps, it does help speed up the meeting a little bit. Not that meeting should be speedy, but it does uh, streamline things. And the beauty of them is, is that when you see items in a consent agenda, when it gets circulated, if there are items there that you don't, that you would like to pull out, you have that opportunity to pull it out. So it would be basically approval of the agenda, approval of the consent agenda. Are there any items that need to be removed? And then we would just carry on with or however Shiloh would like to set up how, how so, that looks. So just, just so I'm clear, so like, so for example, if I don't agree with last month's minutes, I would say, mm -hmm. like, I want to pull that out. The consent agenda, but yeah. then we're agreeing Correct. to yeah. approving the agenda, uh, the report. Yeah. It assumes we've all read the material before yes. we get here. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. 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 Totally. yeah. We don't have that. There's not that much that we go into consent that I can see off of here, I, I, but I'm I mean, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's it, it, it would just be a, a few little sort of things that we just kind of go through that are perfunctory that we don't need to if we do a consent agenda. Mm -hmm. We might include like correspondence and information Vision, in there. Yes. Anything that doesn't yeah. actually require Fire a report decision. or a decision. Yeah. 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 So like we just like the, the Nelson Star thing we just yeah yeah get it right over. there. Okay. Yeah. So then we wouldn't okay. And if directors I don't know what the past product has been, but if directors gave um, written reports, it could be that, that those could even be in consent. And it could be the fact that the director is like, oh, and I forgot to say. And so the director can kind of pull up, pull that out and say, I just have something else to add. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it does streamline things a little bit. It's very, very great. Like I sometimes get a thousand pages. A thousand pages that has a consent agenda is, is nice. You still have to read a thousand pages. But at least you're not having to move the number of items that would be attached to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I so should we have a, can I move that we go sure. to a consent agenda? Thank yeah. you. Second. And that's seconded. And second that. And all those in favor? Hey, great. Thank you. Um, so, and then on to item 12A. Is there anything else on the list that the board wishes to address? Seeing none, I would like to move on to the um, uh, adjournment and that we will be meeting on uh, February the 8th, isn't it? Do we need to confirm the quorum? Oh. No. Yes, we just want to double check that there's enough people here for oh, okay. February the 8th. Yeah. The rest of us, I think I'm pretty sure in here. Yeah. I should be here if I have to go to I have a meeting with some Victoria that day. I think I think I can go to it remotely, but I would be free at 4 30 still to be at that. Remotely here. <laughs> you can be the remotely vague. I could be vaguely here. <laughs> you can be the talking head. Yeah. So are we good then? Do we have enough people? So just Jamie will be absent and that's yeah. Okay. So all those in favor of adjournment? And that uh, looks like it's carried. So there we go. So February the 8th, 4.30. I want to thank 